JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 30th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD. I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving, moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but one of the other major currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday. It lost the most ground versus JPY, the Euro and NZD in that order, while it, it was found virtually unchanged against the British pound. Now, the strengthening of the Japanese yen usually points to risk of trading, but the strengthening of the risk linked queue and the weakening of the US dollar suggest otherwise. The strengthening of the euro is also an indication of improvement in, um, in, in the geopolitical saga, and indeed this was the case. Uh, major European and US indices were a sea of uh, green yesterday, with a, positive, with a positive appetite rolling into the Asian session uh, today. Among the indices under our radar, only Japan's Nikkei lost ground, and this may be because of the yen's strength. Um, in our view, the main catalyst behind the rally in the euro and the broader market sentiment may have been um, may have been the progress in peace talks between Russia and Ukraine in Turkey. In what it is described as the most tangible sign of progress until now, Russia promised uh, promised to scale down military operations around Kiev and uh, northern Ukraine, while Ukraine expressed willingness to adopt a more uh, to adopt a neutral status. This encouraged market, market participants to add to their risk exposures and also uh, to buy back a decent amount of uh, euros as a potential resolution could increase the likelihood for the ECB to lift rates to zero before the end of 2022 as officials will be able to focus mainly on bringing down accelerating inflation rather than also having concerns on how economic growth will be affected by a prolonged geopolitical conflict. Now, but if there was so much to cheer yesterday, why did the yen uh, rebound so strongly? Some say that it may have been due to market participants getting worried that further weakness may start pushing inflation up by raising import costs. However, with Japanese inflation well behind the other major economies, also well below the bank's object objective of 2%, we believe that this is, not, uh, this is not the case yet. Maybe some investors decided to cover, to cover some short positions in order to lock some profits. With the Bank of Japan pledged to stay extra loose, the divergence with other major central banks is likely to continue widening, which could continue adding pressure um, adding pressure on the yen, in, uh, in our opinion. Now, as for today's events, although not major market movers, the most important releases to monitor may be Germany's preliminary CPIs and the US ADP employment report, both, both for March. In Germany, both the CPI and the HICP rates are expected to have continued climbing north. Specifically, they are expected to rise to 6.1 and 6.4% year over year from 5.1 and 5.5% respectively, which could mean that Eurozone's uh, rates, at least the headline one due out uh, on Friday, may follow suit. As uh, for the USS ADP report, the forecast suggests that the private sector has gained 438,000 jobs in March after adding 475,000 in February. This could raise some speculation that the NFPs due out on Friday may also come in uh, below their February print. Indeed, the forecast is for the NFPs to have slowed to 475k from 678k. Um, 
in uh, in the previous month. Having said all that, though, we need to remind uh, to remind you that the ADP number is not a reliable predictor of the NFPs, and thus we will not form an official opinion about the Fed's and the dollar's future course based just on the ADP result. As uh, for the rest of the data from the US besides the ADP report, we also get the final GDP for uh, the fourth quarter with the forecast pointing to a fractional upside revision to 7.1% quarter over quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate from 7%. Now, tomorrow during the Asian session, Japan's preliminary industrial production for February is expected to reveal a rebound to 0.5% month over month from minus 0.8%. The Chinese PMIs for March are also due to be released, but no forecast is currently available. That said, with several cities entering lockdowns due to accelerating spreading of the coronavirus, we see the risks as uh, tilted to the downside. This could initially hurt currencies, the currencies of countries which have close trade ties with China, the likes of Australia and New Zealand. However, with Chinese officials pledged to take all the necessary measures to support uh, uh, the economy and also taking into account the latest recovery in the broader market sentiment, we will treat any such setbacks in the Aussie and the Kiwi as corrective moves before their next legs uh, north. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. At this point, I remind you that there will be no weekly Market Outlook webinar on um, on April 4th and 11th. So the next one will be held on April 18th. You can find the link in the description below. Uh, so goodbye, have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again for the daily market review tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.